On the 20th of August 1940, one of the leading Bolsheviks of the Russian Communist Revolution was attacked with an ice pick and impaled in the head. Leon Trotsky was the man who led the Red Army to victory during the Russian Civil War and was Lenin's right-hand man, seen to be successor to lead the Communist Revolution. Yet, he died in exile in Mexico at the hands of an agent of Joseph Stalin, the man who was able to outmaneuver and claim dominion over the Soviet Union. Trotsky remained an avid critic of Stalin, attempted to reshape the International Communist Revolution yet ultimately failed his goals. In today's video, we will briefly cover the life and death of a man that could have governed the Soviet Union. Leon Trotsky, whose birth name was Lev Bronstein, was born to a Jewish middle-class family in the Russian steppes. The young boy was drawn to liberal and Marxist literature in his youth, becoming a revolutionary against the Tsarist regime. It was during his escape from exile in Siberia following an arrest for his revolutionary actions that he took the name Leon Trotsky, the name that would become his revolutionary pseudonym. During the early 1900s, factions grew within the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party. Trotsky advocated for a more democratic approach to worker-controlled production, as favoured by the Mensheviks, as opposed to Lenin's more elitist Bolshevik wing. To put it simply, the key difference for Trotsky was that he believed the transition from Tsarism to Communism was not possible without a progressive capitalist system in between. On the other hand, Lenin's Bolsheviks believed the capitalist step could be skipped over. Trotsky would soon become disillusioned with the Mensheviks when they accepted that hardcore capitalism could be part of the revolution, instead focusing on unity and not factionalism. During the 1917 revolution, Trotsky would take a leading role. He was elected chairman of the Petrograd Soviet of Workers and Soldiers Deputies. Acting as a military leader, seeing off a number of attempts to retake Petrograd. Following the formation of the Bolshevik government, there was still the question as to Russian involvement in the First World War. The army lacked in both morale and equipment, standing little chance against the German forces. Trotsky's first role as foreign commissar was to deliver on the Bolsheviks' promise of peace, by calling for an immediate amnesty and negotiations between Germany and its allies and the newly formed Soviet Union. In December of 1917, peace talks commenced. Trotsky personally attended the negotiations, though he would use the platform by turning the talks into a propaganda forum. Germany argued for annexation of Russian territory in exchange for peace, though Trotsky argued against this, instead favouring a no-war, no-peace approach. Lenin, however, decided the price for peace was acceptable and would buy much-needed time for the Soviet state to deal with internal reactionary threats. Following the signing of the Brest-Litovsk Peace Treaty, Trotsky resigned as the Foreign Commissar and was instead appointed Commissar of War. As War Commissar, Trotsky had the uninviable task of forming a new Red Army to defend the Communist government against the imminent threats of civil war and foreign intervention. He took steps that were widely criticised. He appointed former Tsarist officers to act as military advisers. He focused on creating a smaller, more skilled fighting force and avoided forming a democratic army. One such opponent to Trotsky's approach was Joseph Stalin, who believed in forming a workers' army regardless as to whether it was competent. Trotsky would often lead his newly formed Red Army at the front, giving speeches from aboard his mobile headquarters, an armoured train. The Red Army would go on to defeat the Royalist and foreign-backed White Army in the Russian Civil War. As a result of his actions during the Civil War, Trotsky established himself as Lenin's right-hand man. He was selected as one of the initial five members of the Politburo, the key policy and decision-making body within the Soviet Union. Whilst he was an intellectual and a proven war leader, Trotsky lacked in his ability to play politics and often failed to win over the party, relying instead on his close relationship with Lenin. Stalin, however, had no issue in consolidating power as the seeds of division were planted. One of Trotsky's more controversial actions occurred in March of 1921 and centred around the Kronstadt naval garrison. The sailors stationed at Kronstadt were vital in securing Petrograd during the Russian Revolution 
and their support was seen as a barometer of the mood of the people. The sailors and civilians alike railed against the lack of democracy within the party, called for greater civil rights, and called for the inclusion of socialists and anarchists in the Soviets. Upon his arrival at the Kronstadt Rebellion, Trotsky called for an immediate and total surrender of the armed men who were holed up in the Kronstadt Fortress. He set about arresting and holding hostage the family members of those who had rebelled, a tactic he had used during the civil war to ensure the loyalty of the former Tsarist military advisers. However, this merely strengthened the resolve of many of the rebels, seeing their case proved true. Ultimately, the Bolsheviks retook the island fortress, following little attempts to resolve the matter peacefully. In fact, Trotsky had authorized the use of chemical weapons in order to break the resolve of the rebels, and was willing to use this if the final assault had failed. During the battle, some 1,000 of the rebels died during the fighting, and after the battle, an estimated 2,000 were executed, many of whom summarily. In May of 1922, Lenin fell ill with a cerebral hemorrhage. This brought to the fore who just would succeed Lenin, and Trotsky was seen as the likely candidate. Whilst he did have the support of much of the rank and file, Trotsky's rivals in the Politburo maneuvered to prevent his rise. The decline of Lenin also meant the decline of Trotsky's influence. It was not until October of 1923 that Trotsky was prepared to speak out against the lack of economic reform and the decline of democracy within the party. In response, Trotsky was painted as a reactionary and someone who was wishing to go back to the factional Menshevik days. It soon followed that Lenin had passed away and Trotsky was given the wrong date for the funeral and entirely missed the event. During the next few years, the Soviet Union, under the direction of Stalin, turned insular focusing on socialism within its borders. Trotsky was all but finished as a force within the Politburo, and ultimately exiled from the Soviet Union in January of 1928. He would go on to live in Turkey, France, and Norway before settling in Mexico. There, he lived with artists Diego Rivieria and Frida Kahlo, the latter with whom he had an affair. From exile, Trotsky attempted to reignite international socialism, in stark opposition to the insular Stalinist approach. He would write essays about the dangers of Stalinism, of the rise of Nazism, and the unique threat of the two working together, following the non-aggression pact between the two countries. During his time in exile, attempts were made on Trotsky's life. One notable attempt being where some 27 Stalinist agents armed with machine guns and incendiary bombs attacked Trotsky's residence, though they ultimately failed to kill him. Trotsky's death would come at the hands of Ramon Mercader, a Spanish NKVD agent who had managed to integrate himself as part of Trotsky's entourage. On the 20th of August 1940, Ramon found himself alone with Trotsky in his study. When his back was turned, Ramon attacked Trotsky with an ice pick, embedding the blade into his skull, his knee and his shoulder. This, however, did not kill Trotsky, and the two men fought until guards rushed to the scene. Ramon was beaten to a pulp, but Trotsky urged that he be spared so they could learn about the assailant. Trotsky was taken to hospital, but the wound would claim his life the next day. According to one of his bodyguards, his last words before he became unconscious were, I think Stalin has finished the job he started. Trotsky was one of the leading stars of the Russian Revolution, largely due to his intellect, his ability to inspire through public speaking, and as an administrator capable of most tasks assigned to him. However, his arrogance and confidence earned him few allies and resulted in his isolation. It can be argued that Trotsky sold his soul when he became a Bolshevik in 1917. Placing himself underneath and ultimately relying on Lenin would mean he would come to accept anti-democratic methods, anti-democratic methods that he had previously condemned. It is often interesting to play what if in history, and one of those great questions is, what would the Soviet Union look like if Trotsky had won the struggle to succeed Lenin? His rise and fall is an interesting story, and there is certainly much more that a short video such as this cannot cover. Trotsky remains one of the most interesting figures in modern history if not for his actions, 
but for the actions he failed to take in stopping the rise of Joseph Stalin. <laughs>